Welcome back. Our first guest uh, began her movie career at the tender age of 16. Uh, by 20, she was starring in the classic film Singing in the Rain. She's now doing a national tour playing the unsinkable Molly Brown on stage. It opens here in Los Angeles at the Pantages, September 19th. She's also a best-selling uh, writer. Her autobiography is entitled uh, Debbie. It's soon to be out in paperback. Please welcome Debbie Reynolds. De Isn't that sweet? Well, you're I a sweet. I like rowdy oh. ones. Oh. Do something rowdy for her next time. Well, you know, and I ain't down yet. With da, 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 da. Something a little more. No. I could go to sleep with <laughs> that. <laughs> well, it affects your entrance. It makes it Is more. That it? When you when you were like that, it makes you more regal as oh, you come oh, up. Oh, regal. Yeah, don't you? And you do look regal. I've never really tried to be regal. <laughs> well, you look fine. You look swell. You look spiffy. Thank and you. and all those words. And and you're playing Molly Brown again. Is I'm that thinkable, is that Molly Brown? Like like on your tombstone, which we trust won't be implanted for another fifty years or so. No. Uh, would you mind uh, that? If, if that's what it said, I mean, is that the role you like? Yeah. Well, no, I, I've already designed my tombstone. Huh? I, yeah, I have a tombstone made where I have a little clown with a, a phone in one hand and a checkbook in the other. <laughs> I don't I know like how that. your life is gone, but no. mine's gone about that direction. <laughs> has, has the money gone out uh, from time to time? Oh, I, yes, from time to time. That hasn't happened to you yet. Oh, I no. See. no, 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 hasn't happened. What, well, what? how many divorces do you have? Well, I... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm one and not counting. Uh, I'm all by myself. How many have you uh, been through? How many of you? How many divorces have you? Uh, have you? Well, I know I haven't had a lot of divorces, and I hope just, not to have any more. Just two. It's just sort of what happens in life. But w with a divorce, it's usually quite common that the money kind of takes wings and flies away too. Which which not one unusual. which one cost you the most financially? Yeah, it's different different emotions. Uh, my second marriage cost me the most. You know, we're talking millions here. About thirty. Thirty? Were you just in a generous mood, or just how did stick this... with this show, and you could lose the same amount? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, what, a, what a pleasant thought! Thank you so much for planning. Now, how does one lose thirty million dollars? Well, you, do, you just uh, don't. Uh, you're not smart. You know, obviously, I have very poor taste in men and worse judgment in money. <laughs> Is that, uh, is that yeah. all it takes? Well, I'm just not a good businesswoman, and I never Sounds ask like questions. Sounds like a crummy businesswoman, not just not good. Well, I think they'll have good instincts. I see property, I want to buy it, but my husband would always say to me, now, dear, you know, the men run the family, and the men uh, decide uh, those things, and, and uh, let me take care of everything. And so he, he did, <laughs> took, took very good uh, care of everything. Now, this was, not, <laughs> this was not Mr. Fisher we're speaking of. This no, is your no, second mi husband. No, Mr. Fisher uh, lost his own. <laughs> <laughs> But my second husband lost one. Yeah. He was a businessman, but he was a gambleholic. It's, so it's oh. a very big problem that wasn't really recognized in those days. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's an old story, and it's done and over with. Thank yeah. God. And, Laura, I've been really lucky. I'm remarried to a wonderful man five years now, to, who's a, a really nice... Oh, you're right. And you got smarter? Did you get smarter, too? Well, I don't know if I got any smarter, darling, but that's a kind of thing. <laughs> Do you know Ja? Because she's been in the news a lot lately. Uh, she's funny, isn't she the yeah. best? Yeah, well, nobody can make a career out of all this, can it? It's the best. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, who knows what the real story is, but sure was good reading. Yeah. I never had an awful, he punched me and he dragged me out of the car, darling. I never saw angry with him, but he looked like Tom Selleck. <laughs> You know, I was uh, I was I was at your uh, daughter's house over the weekend. Uh, Did you Car go? Carrie Fisher, there was a, there was a party there Big for the, party. Uh, involving this film, Postcards from the Edge, and I have a small but pivotal role in that film. You do. Yes. I play a, a talk show host. It's the oddest cast. Oh, I thought you were probably the cocaine seller. <laughs> Oh, that's no. a, it's not a seller? What no. are they called? Pusher, sorry. Yeah. Well, thanks. <laughs> My generation drank. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to keep up. <laughs> but there, there is some odd casting in that film because Meryl Streep plays... Great casting. Play, well, odd, but it was a... But bad offbeat. word, Mer but it's Meryl, all right. That's all right. I'm, I'm, paid for, I'm paid to use bad words. Meryl Streep uh, plays Carrie. Well, More it's, or less. it's a novel, you know, yeah, I mean, a Carrie I mean, Mel. Okay. The Carrie kind of role. So, yeah. And who plays the Debbie kind of role? It's Shirley MacLaine is playing supposedly the, my role. Yeah. Well, you would All have been good character. for your role. I would have been good for the role, but they didn't ask me. So, uh... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to show up anyway that day on the set and just say, Hi, guys, it's the real mommy. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's no, I'm, I'm happy, Shirley. Shirley's a great actor. Yeah. wonderful, funny, terrific. I was trying to think of really who could play. Yeah, it's an odd situation, isn't it, that, that I'm alive and that Carrie wrote a book. Yes. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not odd that you're alive. No, it's nice, it's nice I'm alive. Yeah. But then my daughter wrote a book in which I'm in the book, and it's about a mother and a daughter. Not everything is about Carrie and I. I mean, she did write a novel, but a yeah. lot of it is about a mother and a daughter. So it's interesting that... Uh, Carrie's alive, I'm alive, and other people are playing us. I find that kind of... It's going to be interesting to see how they decide we are. <laughs> yeah. I hope I have a good time. <laughs> because I have had. I hope Shirley has. <laughs> uh, we'll be ta back and talk with the good like time that, Debbie in a moment. You can sit cross-legged. You're doing fine. The Stay Drew with us. Style. We'll be back. Honestly. <laughs> She wanted rowdy, rousing. Oh, talk! You got a lot of hot air there. That's great. <laughs> yeah, Debbie Reynolds is uh, is with us. So the Pantages, the unsinkable Molly Brown, September nineteenth. Now, forgive me. Uh, I'm going to uh, phrase this as delicately as possible, but you are not a child anymore. No, no. No, I'm and a woman. Would you like to try any of it? <laughs> Well, no, we're on the air, but... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Regular or extra crispy? Uh, uh mushy. Yeah, okay. Very nice. <laughs> now... Bury yourself in death. Go ahead, now. You were, um... Uh, I don't know. Now, the, oh, yes. the role goes it's, it's from age... It's a very demanding... It's a very difficult role yeah. because of the dancing. Yeah. As far as the age level, the, 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 the part, of course, is from 18 until, you know, like in her late 40s. Mm -hmm. It's about her life. Unsinkable was the Titanic. When she went to Europe, she's coming home, the ship goes down, and she saves a lot of people in the, in the lifeboat and all that. And Meredith Wilson put this little story to music about a poor girl who comes from the mountains. Sure. But it's, there's a lot of physical... The only quite way a physical you can do it kind of is to stay in great shape yeah. and so that your body looks really young and the camera doesn't get that close on stage. Ah, so what do you what do you do to keep in shape? Are you a, uh, a I w well I work out and yeah? swim and exercise Regular? and eat the right things. I do all uh, it's all sort of boring to be disciplined. I mean my nature is very Irish so let's party. But yeah. when you have hard to, to party dance, with Bran, isn't it? It's hard to party with Bran. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. skim milk. Yeah. And is. and a watered down wa watermelon. It's a bore. Prunes are a drag. <laughs> Do you get yours pitted, or do you... Do you get them I take... It. Well, I know I like the pits in there, because I have to have something to chew on <laughs> and say, I hate you, I hate you. <laughs> I we actually have uh, a, a clip from, from a stage... From the stage from play. From the stage play. Oh, well, that'll be nice. And I think we can even talk oh. about what's going on here. Thank we hear you. some music in the... So Thank we'll see. You, this is from the unsinkable Molly, Molly Brown. My That's pleasure. That's it. It's the movie. It I mean, it's the play. Oh, there it is. And, the, and... He's my friend. That was the number. He's my friend, and I'll stay my friend. And this is the jig part, the Irish jig part. I'm exhausted. Well, not yet. <laughs> no, I am. <laughs> you would love it. It's better than golf. Oh. Here we go. Now, let's see what happens here. Oh! Well, she's so high. <laughs> Have they ever dropped you? Have you been dropped? Oh, yes, I have been dropped. That one really hurts. Yeah, I would think no, so. No, because it hits you right on your head. Because I have a very hard noggin, but that still hurts your neck and all. Yeah. Sometimes they just slip. See, they try to grab you uh, just above the boobs. If, if they grab you... That's a theater term. It's hard to miss mine, so they do. Yeah, the, well, the nachvas. <laughs> I'm not... I'm from the Midwest. I don't know what that is. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. But you've been around enough to know what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> This might be another good time for a break. We'll be back with Debbie. Good time. Oh, yeah. Hey, Tom, we're back with Debbie. You all right? <laughs> Give him a towel. <laughs> Yeah, pretty impressive. No. You know, my mom would be is, is going to be excited tonight. When I told her about a year ago that I was going to be doing a talk show, the first thing, I swear, the first words out of her mouth were, does that mean you'll get to interview movie stars? <laughs> so this would be perfect. The few that are living. I'm here. <laughs> That's right. I'm here. Yeah, she Tell would. mom hi. Yeah, she would, she would like that. You know, people, uh, younger folks particularly, don't 
probably have a memory of how much you were on the national consciousness when you were going through all that stuff with, with Eddie Fisher and, well, and Liz Taylor. Well, I did films 27 years. Yeah, no. and, and it was, I mean, you could not pick up, you could not pick up a magazine <laughs> anywhere. He's got the whole yeah, uh, This man saves everything. It's, it's right out of my garage. Careers. <clears throat> I mean, photo play uh, at the time. Well, we used go to be... Go up to that uh, headline up there. Go up, go up a little bit. Those are the yeah, babies, thanks. right? Debbie, I wish Carrie Eddie and Liz time. happiness. Uh, yeah, that was nice of you to say, considering the circumstances. I'm a nice girl. Uh, what else we got? I mean, I well, won't Well, we used to all. take pictures just for movie magazines, and we did like 300 covers a year. So Liz ended up with Eddie. Liz Taylor tells why we did it. Debbie Reynolds reveals why you must well, not Well, luckily, we me. both moved on. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> did you... How is, how is Eddie? Do you see I him I don't all? know. <laughs> I never talk about Eddie because he's not really my personal friend, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. My children are very, they're very close, and Carrie and they talk to him. That's what's important. They're good children, and that's what's important. Are you, are you really going to uh, uh, quit dancing after this? Have you, have you had it I'm with I'm going to hang up my shoes after the unsinkable Molly Brown this last time. If anybody wants to see those old legs fly, they got to come catch me. I thought you just, you're just tired of it? No, right. I love dancing, but all the flipping and all the really tough dancing, I'll still do, you know, I mean, my jitterbug and a little bit of a tap dance. Yeah. But, uh, you know, George Burns is still doing that. Mm. Bob Hope is still doing that. That's something you never tap, you never stop tapping. Yeah. Yeah. But the really hard dancing, it's time for me, and I wanted to finish with the unsinkable Molly Brown. So I'm doing it all through 1990. We're all booked solid. Not I'll be happy. going to Harris, I'll be going to with my own act, October 16th. That's the only other act I'm doing other than Molly Brown this year. And, and that's it for the serious stuff, the flipping yeah. and all and all that kind of thing. What would you, what would you like to do now? I mean, I, do you have your eyes set I'd on I'd like anything? to do this show when you get tired. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, I'm getting kind of pooped already, no. so. Uh, I'm kidding. I always wanted to do a talk show. Would, would you, you'd be terrific, I would think. Have you ever guest hosted on a show like this? I only did Merv's show once, I guess, yeah. hosted one time. I, I just l enjoy talking with the people and topics didn't of the day. Didn't you strip Jack Parr on a show one night when you were on his Oh, show? well, if I didn't, I hope I should have. Uh, Jack Parr, many years ago, yeah. that was an old thing. It was just a joke because he said something rather, I thought, fresh and oh. rude. And uh, so I just went below the desk. Mm -hmm. And then he followed me below the desk, Good and while he, I said, you can't be here because it's too boring, the camera's pointing to nothing. So then I started to take his clothes off, but I felt it was appropriate to keep the timing right. So then we kept throwing out the clothes. When I reached for the toupee, he got nervous. <laughs> and, uh, oh, not, not that he wears one. Jack, Jack never Jack, has. Jack, just... And that, anyway, it was a very funny bit. It just sort of went down in history. He's a terrific guy, very funny host. I have heard you tell a story about, uh, about uh, in the movie days and people suggesting that you get vitamin shots or, or, or some kind of shots to kind of... No, well, you're talking about the studio system yeah. in the old days when they wanted to keep the stars working longer hours because we worked Saturdays, you know, you didn't work. You worked every day mm -hmm. so, and till 11 at night. Well, rather like a lot of the TV series today. Sure. But th we had doctors on the lots. In those days, you had the fire department, you had your own hospital. We everything. had makeup people who do all the medical work here. Oh, yeah. I heard that. They do great stitching. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're great. in for a winner, huh? Just put the thumb up. <laughs> You'll be a movie star. But they just would, this part. They would, they would literally want to fill you full of uh, Well, they good just juice, give you or? vitamins, but yeah. that's what they said it was, vitamins. But that led to the downfall of a lot of... Stars, or the beginning of uh, of a problem. You always demurred, Speed was, I guess, the big thing. See, I never even, none of us knew anything about that. That was sort of a deal that they had evidently arrived at in, in the upper offices. Well, let's keep the actors working beyond the hours that they're really exhausted. They might be exhausted, but we can give them a little vitamin shot. And wow. my mother and my family doctor just said, if she's tired at 18, uh, she doesn't need, to, she needs to go to bed. Yeah. But I had a sane mother and a wonderful family physician. So I, su I survived. I didn't fall into all that madness. I've yeah. been very blessed. Good for all of you. Uh, the book, by the way, is coming out in paperback. It's full of uh, yeah. delicious and delightful stories paperback here. Paperback, they tell uh, me cheaper, so... Uh, uh, Debbie, my life. Uh, Debbie Reynolds and Pantages, uh, Unsinkable Molly Brown, September 19th. Three weeks only, right, here in Los Three Angeles? Three weeks only. We're doing Wednesday matinee and Saturday matinee. Right. Hope the folks come. It's always a great having you. Thanks very Thanks, much, Pat. Debbie. Uh, we'll uh, see you soon. Mother. Take care. I will. Debbie Reynolds, folks. We'll be back, and the judge, the judge, will sing. The Pat Sajak Show, sponsored by Try Buffered Buffered, Buffered Aspirin, and by Weight Watchers Entrees. This is Living.